G'day everyone, Fiona here again for Artist Gang Tuesday and this time around I'm going to bring you a couple of little pieces that I've made on some three ply wooden substrates. So you can see here that I'm adding a little bit of gel medium to them because I'm doing my favourite thing before I start a project and that's adding some ephemera collage. Now remember last time I forgot to wrap around the edges so this time I'd remembered. So that's why I've put a little gap in between them here so that I can pop my ephemera on the outside and then I can break down through the middle and I can make sure that I wrap it around the edge. So I've just used matte gel medium and I've got a thick bristled brush and I'm just using my hand to smooth over the last of the gel medium and I'll cover both of these boards completely. So here we go, I've had a selection of stamps and some um, ephemera pages and I'm just putting the last of the little bits on here, making sure again, wrapping around the edges. So now what you'll see is me procrastinating because this is me putting way too much gel medium over the top. <laughs> Having said that, you will see in a minute why I'm very thankful for the amount of gel medium that I decided to apply over the top. The thing about making videos is that sometimes you often think you're not recording when you are and other times you think you are recording and you're not. So you get where I'm going with this? Yeah, that's one of those times where I didn't think I was recording and I actually was and then when I thought I was recording, I actually wasn't. But anyway... You now have the pleasure of watching gel medium dry. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I cut that bit out, most of it, because, you know, it's funny. But I'll tell you what I did do. I recorded something and you didn't actually get to see it. You want to see it? There it is. This is where I'm very thankful that I put a lot of gel medium on. Because guess what? Most of this was able to just be wiped off and I could start again. I say most of it. Mm, not all of it came off. That golden paint, it's pretty good. So anyway, what I've done is I've gone and put gesso on it all. Because you know what? Gesso is your friend. And it doesn't matter. We can start again. That's just the beauty of those little mistakes that we make that sometimes turn into the best thing we've ever done. Now, what I was going to say before when I was recording, when I wasn't actually recording, was when I'm procrastinating and I don't really know what I'm going to do with a surface, I often will just get out a soft pencil, um, a 6B graphite, something like that, and I'll just doodle some shapes. Now these shapes don't have to be anything, but in this case they turned out to be a couple of flowers. So I decided to go with it. I got out some beautiful red paint and some fluoro pink paint because you can never have too much fluoro pink and I decided that I was going to paint these in a poppy red colour. Now I've done the circles, the little doodles around the outside of some major stamps here. I didn't want to cover them up completely so I'm, I'm trying not to overpaint. I'm also using my left hand which is my non-dominant hand because I didn't want it to be too perfect. I'm kind of glad that this is take two. Take one for me was a little bit too over the top with colour in the background. This has actually given me an opportunity to pull it back a bit. Again, I'm just adding the paint here to these squiggles that I've made and voila, I have myself a little flower garden. Again, mixing the colours up still while they're wet, not worrying about the drying in between. I quite like just placing paint onto the onto the substrate this is where the wood really comes in handy you don't have to really blend the colors together you just kind of put them all together on top of each other and it looks really cool now i could leave it just like this because i've drawn the stalks and i've painted the flowers in but i just wanted to add a little bit of greenery and i've got this green paint this golden paint it's chromium oxide green it's in the fluid acrylics and it's a really good leafy green colour, but I just needed to give it a bit of a tint and a bit of a shade just to get a couple of other elements. So I used some of the golden high flows in the titanium white and the shading grey. I mean, when it comes to the shading, I probably could have used a bit of black, but I didn't want it to be too dark. I mean, as it is, I just mixed the whole lot in together anyway, so, you know. It came up okay. 
it's dark enough so what I'll do now is I'll just start with that darker shade and then I'll add some of the um, oxide green and then I'll finish it off the top with the tinted green that I've made so on top I'll also add some highlights with the titanium white in the high flow acrylic I love this uh, high flow for those little highlights because it's just so light it just sits on top of the heavy bodied paint and this is also where I can start to add a few of those little details. So next up, I wanted to add some stamping. I've got the Donna Downey As I See It stamp set here from the um, Unity Stamp Company. And it's got some really awesome sayings. So I've pulled out four of my favorites. They're so fresh, I haven't even taken the back off. Now I've got four colors of tissue paper here. I wasn't quite sure what selection I was going to use. So I thought if I stamp on all of them, then I can decide before I stick them down. I'm just using black archival ink and I'm just going to put every single stamp on every single piece of tissue paper. That way I can tear them up and, um, you know, glue them down and put them wherever I like. I did decide in the end that the dark green was just way too dark, even though I did tear up at least one of the sayings. As soon as I put it down with the other colours, I knew straight away that it wasn't going to work. It was just going to be far too dominant. However, if you wanted just one saying to stand out, that would have been a really good way to do it. Okay, that's for next time. So the next thing you must do is find the tiniest brush you possibly can, not because that's what I did. Yeah, here I am trying to put gel medium down with the smallest brush possible. Anyway, for some reason I decide I'm going to persist. Yeah, I get there. So a layer of gel medium and then the tissue paper and then more gel medium over the top. That's why I've used the archival ink because the gel medium isn't going to make the ink smudge because it sets nice and dry. Yep, see, didn't want the green one. Way too strong for me. I just keep layering this and I'll do it on both of these little substrates both either side so this one is on the right hand side of the panel and then on the other little substrate I've got it on the left hand side of the panel and look here I even remembered to put it on the edge look at that champion I find I always have to do things symmetrically maybe it's a scrapbooking thing I don't know but anyway, it had to go on the opposite side of the other panel. Again, with my piddly tiny little brush, because I'm insisting on using it rather than getting one that's a larger size and probably far more appropriate. I just love the way tissue paper clings. I, I, it's just, it's a thing. I really enjoy it. I like how the clear or white tissue paper just disappears into the background. It just, it does something for me. But moving on from the tissue paper, I've decided that this little pan pastel is a, my new friend with this little sponge. This, this one is a chrome oxide green extra dark. So I was very careful not to put too much on. And I've really just gone around the edges just to give it a bit of depth, a bit of a frame. And then when I put the two together, it just went way too dark, way too dark for me. I, I needed to get some of that white back as I rub more on. But of course, gesso is your friend. So in I come with the gesso. And I'm just going to use my finger. The reason why I'm tapping it off before I'm tapping it on is because I want a really light covering on my finger so that I don't get a big blob. Sometimes it works straight away. And other times it takes me a little while for my brain to connect with my finger and the gesso to work out, one, how heavily I have to push. And two, uh, you know, how much gesso I actually need. So again, all the way around the outside, both of the substrates, and then I even went back and did it again because I really wanted that nice white frame. Now I've come in with my pencil and my non-dominant hand. Yes, I'm right-handed. This is my left. And I'm just defining the edges of the flowers one more time, just to make sure we haven't lost them in amongst all the gesso that I decided needed to be applied. I just keep going around the outside of all these little bits and pieces and defining them. On my right hand, which is, of course, my proper writing hand for me, what I'm doing is I'm using a loose grip because I don't want the drawings to be perfect. 
I also wanted these little titles to stand out a little bit more. So again, with my um, my graphite pencil, and I think it's about it's about a four B or a six B. This one, so it's quite soft. I'm going around the outside of some of the words. I'm doing the same again with my chubby white pencil and then I go back in again and one final time with the graphite pencil to define the areas that I want. And then I think I go back in with my white chubby again and then my graphite and then my white chubby and then no. <laughs> I do do it a couple of times though. I mean layers are everything aren't they? And you know I really could have just left it at that but it's me and I've got this fetish for fluoro paint at the moment so I had to add some. I mean, I've got some fluoro paint in the flowers, but you know, that's never enough, is it? So I add some more to the flowers and I add some little mark making on, again, <laughs> one on one side, one on the other. Really need to get over this whole symmetrical problem I've got. A little bit of red to go with it because, of course, the flowers are red with some fluoro pink. So my marks need to be fluoro pink with some red. And then I do this gorgeous little trick with my pencil because I can't leave my pencil alone where I'm actually drawing into the wet paint. I mean, it makes your pencil a little bit mucky, but you just have a piece of paper towel to wipe the excess paint off. But I love the way it marks the paint. It sort of just digs into it and makes these really, really cool patterns. And then, of course, I've got to go around everything one more time because I really don't know when to stop. But that's OK. Isn't that half the fun of it? Well, that's what I'm telling myself anyway. So there you go. I reckon that's pretty well done. I mean, if I could stop drawing on it, it would be done. I'm, I'll, I'll stop soon. I'm sure I will. It, maybe the, no, it, maybe next time? Uh, this time? No. Uh, no, guess what? I get out my white chubby pencil again. Surely I'm finished now. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Oh, done. Thank you. I'll see you next time.